All right, let's think about how we would divide by a fraction. And before we think about how we would divide by a fraction, let's think about why we would divide by a fraction. Right? Remember, division represents splitting things up into groups. So maybe we want a group that is itself a fraction. Hmm. How could that happen? Okay. You know how hamburgers have been getting crazy huge these days? Let's imagine that we're in this situation. Suppose we have four pounds of ground beef, and each hamburger uses two-thirds of a pound. We want to know how many burgers we can make. So that gives us four pounds divided by two-thirds of a pound per burger. We want to know how many burgers we can make. Hmm. Okay, let's think about how we could do this just physically in real life. We could take our four pounds, split them up so that we have some four one pound piles, and then split each pile into third of a pound piles. So if this is one pound, right, I could split that into three equal parts which means four pounds would look like this. Well, looking at my four pounds, I see that that's 12 thirds of a pound. So I can reimagine this problem as 12 thirds of a pound divided by two thirds of a pound per burger. Right now I'm thinking of third of a pound as my noun instead of pound. Twelve thirds of a pound divided by two thirds of a pound per burger. Well, twelve divided by two, that's just six burgers. Is that really what we get? Let's see. One burger, two burgers, three burgers, four burgers, five burgers, and six burgers. Yeah, that actually makes sense. Right, we can get six groups, each of which consists of two-thirds of a pound. What did we end up doing here? It looks like what we ended up doing was multiplying by the denominator and dividing by the numerator. To divide by a fraction, we multiply by the denominator and divide by the numerator. Contrast that with what we saw before. To multiply by a fraction, we found that we wanted to divide by the denominator and multiply by the numerator. What's the difference? Now you see that we've just exchanged multiplication and division, which makes sense. Multiplication and division are opposites of one another. But another way to look at this is that the roles of the numerator and denominator are switched we see that the roles of the numerator and denominator are switched. It turns out that that is an incredibly useful way of thinking about this. It's so useful that we have a name for making that switch between the numerator and denominator. The reciprocal of a fraction is the fraction obtained by reversing its numerator and denominator. So, for example, the reciprocal of two-thirds is three-halves. And then, based on what we just observed, we can see that to divide by a fraction, 
we simply multiply by its reciprocal. So the problem we just did then becomes 4 divided by 2 thirds. Right, 4, writing it as a fraction, is 4 wholes. Dividing by 2 thirds is the same as multiplying by 3 halves. We get 12 halves. Divide the numerator and denominator each by 2. And we get 6 wholes, or 6. Let's see another example just to follow the process through. And then I'll show you how to do this on your calculator as well. Let's say we want to take 5 sixths divided by 7 eighths. We rewrite that as multiplication. 5 sixths times 8 sevenths. Taking the reciprocal now just of the divisor, just of the number we're dividing by. So we'll have 5 times 8 is 40. 6 times 7 is 42. We see we want to divide the numerator and denominator each by 2. And we'll have 20 21sts. On the calculator, all right, note, we must put each fraction in parentheses. So we'll say 5 divided by 6 divided by 7 divided by 8. And then, since we want our answer as a fraction, we'll put in 2 frac. What does that look like on the calculator? We'll say 5 sixths divided by 7 eighths. Hit the math button, choose frac, enter 20 21sts, exactly the way we found by hand. And that's all there is to doing this calculation on the calculator. That's all there is to doing this calculation by hand as well.